What's going on guys, JC West here, back again. Um, it's been a long road getting to this review, um, getting to this, I don't know, final impressions, final thoughts, final, I don't know. So, uh, you know, what we're going to talk about today is what it finally took to get this thing to where it is today. Um, and again, my final thoughts and uh, impressions, and I guess review, of the Cobalt from House of Hybrids, available at electronicsticks.com. Here we go. So, if many of you saw my last video, you know um, it was some challenges, I guess, to get this thing to a, to a place where it needed to be to really vape it <clears throat> and have it in the in the collection as you know um, a powerhouse workhorse mod. Like, uh, yeah, I don't just collect stuff. I uh, I use every PB that I have. So, I really wanted this mod uh, or APV Advanced Personal Vaporizer to work. I wanted it to function because I love how it, I think it's a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous mod. Um, hybrid uh, Advanced Personal Vaporizer. Um, I know somebody said, "Hey, that doesn't look like a cobalt." I, I just took a standard, you know, stainless steel brush, uh, Zen cap, and put it on. Um, other than that, you know, it, it, everything about this is a, a cobalt. Um, um, I just I thought it looked really nice putting the uh, you know the brush the brush tank on it. So let's take a vape on it and uh, have a little chat about it. That was a really good vape. <clears throat> it's just a 50-50 juice that I made. Some uh, uh, 12 milligram uh, little menthol. It's just a hodgepodge. I would say generally the ratio on this is somewhere around 60% VG, 40% PG. Um, vape's great. And I have to give a huge shout out to, uh, to my buddy Brian Jolly Rogers over at Vaporwall and uh, ECF and about everywhere else because he saw my video on the first impressions for this that I put out a couple of weeks ago and he sent me a message and he offered to fix it for me. He said he had fixed his and uh, so we're going to go over some of the things that he'd done to get it going and uh, what, it is, what does it take to get this $250 advanced personal vaporizer to get that vape that you just saw a moment ago. <clears throat> I would say right out of the box, most Zenesis's with the exception of Sidewinder that I've ever owned come out of the box with the vape that I just showed you. Um, in, in general, Mike at House of Hybrids makes a really, really good personal vaporizer, advanced personal vaporizer. Um, it's really generally good stuff, but uh, when this came out, I don't know, it's something new, I guess, throwing the anodized, uh, throwing anodized aluminum into the mix, because generally it's been stainless steel and, and heavy gauge uh, three, 317 LVM, 317 LVM, I think, uh, don't quote me on that. Um, surgical grade stainless steel, but when we moved to the aluminum, we got the anodized process, and we're adding color to the party, and I don't know, a lot of commercial things. Um, now the thing is, is that added some problems to it. So we'll start with, uh, we'll, we'll get up close, and I'll show you the things that was done to, to get it to this point, and we'll come back with some final thoughts. Alright, so so here's the close up of the, uh, the Zenesis Cobalt. Now, first off, there's, there's nothing special about this top cap. It's just uh, the top cap off of a, of a Zenesis standard, and I thought it, it, you know, it kind of enhanced the look of it. Having the polished top, or not the polished, the uh, the brush top, it, it really matched this little ring down here, the knurled ring for the switch. So it's just a cosmetic thing, and it in no way affected the affects the performance of the unit. So the first thing we did that uh, that Brian or Jolly Rogers did is sanded down this control, this little uh, I don't know, this little section at the base of the battery tube. Um, this is a very important part of the connection because this is where the switch grounds against the body. Um, so if there's any anodized, 
material that bled over into this ring, it's important to sand that down. And I had actually already done that before uh, I sent it off to uh, to kind of get it worked on. So, so very important if there's any anodized material on this little ring on the bottom of the switch, you would just lay some sandpaper down flat, you would hold the unit on it and kind of do this little number here to remove the anodized off of that little ring. So that was pretty important. And the next thing was, and, and this is where the majority of the issue was, um, was, the, uh, was in the switch. There was a lot of resistance in the switch. Uh, it was actually about 1.2 ohms, I think, total in the switch. So, first thing to do, and that I know that Brian done, is you, you just take that little screw off there, and we replace the spring with a, uh, with a much better quality nickel plated spring. Um, the stock spring that come with it, the uh, precision spring, um, it really looked like a, uh, it looked like a piece of uh, galvanized pipe. It was very dull, there was um, some oxidation on it. Um, so it was just uh, not getting a really good complete circuit through the spring. So uh, all together I think at one point there was almost 7 ohms of resistance just in the stock spring. So the stock spring was replaced with this nickel plated spring. I know that you can get these springs out of um, just pretty much any, any generic uh, you know, D-cell battery uh, flashlight, like an 8 or $10 flashlight. These springs are, are pretty read readily available in those. So the next thing was, we was losing a lot of power, or a lot of the voltage from the battery, down inside this tube. And this is where the positive screw screws down into the switch. And whenever you push the switch, it would it when you push the switch, it pushes the screw up, making contact with the battery. Um, this was completely anodized, and that was that's kind of a big issue. Uh, at least in our case, there was a lot of, of loss in, 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 in voltage and a lot of resistance added um, from, uh, I guess, the, the, the current from the battery um, having some loss in the switch. So, so what he did is he took some easy off on a uh, uh, pipe straw, and on the pipe straw, he just kind of put it in there, spun it around to clean it out, took another clean pipe straw to kind of dry it off, and then also took um, the easy off and put it on the outside of this post. And he also sanded really well up against the base where the spring makes contact. <clears throat> There's also some sanding done right here where the spring makes contact with the inside of the screw. And uh, actually sanded and sanded and, and, and polished the O-ring a little bit. Um, that the positive through screw goes into to you know make make that final contact with the battery. So that's pretty that's I would say for the most part that's it. It was just replacing the spring and, and getting all the gunk out of it that was causing it to have a poor connection. Um, really not, not, a whole lot of, not a whole lot there. Um, <clears throat> once the, the switch was then checked, and I'll tell you how you can test your switch. If you take a multimeter and you put the, uh, the positive, well, you, you actually depress the switch off of the unit. You put your positive right here where it makes contact with the battery, and your negative either on the threading or on the knurled edge, just against bare metal, that would tell you how much resistance your your switch is actually adding from the first point of contact to the with the battery to the last point of contact where it actually grounds against the body. Um, you know, a good switch would have you know zero to I would say even as much as a tolerance of 0.2 in the switch, but uh, we were getting a, a good bit over an ohm in this switch. So it's pretty much as simple as some easy off, some sandpaper. Um, a little bit of time, pipe straw, and a spring. And, uh, you know, as far as, I don't know, I wouldn't call it cutting costs. It was just kind of not paying attention. Because we're talking about, you know, a nickel spring and properly anodizing the switch. So with all that done, and again, it took, I think it took, you know, 15, 20 minutes to get this thing going. We always, I always make sure that I seat it really well against the battery. This is, I don't know that this is a freshly charged battery, but. I would call that substantially better. Substantially better than what we saw in the first demonstration. So that's it for the up close stuff. Be right back. So that was it. 
that was the, uh, I guess, what it took to get this thing going. And and I have to say, it's, uh, I still hold to the, the cobalts I don't buy um, until these issues are resolved. Um, with the anodized process, not everybody's going to go through, you know, fixing all that to get this thing where it needs to be. Um, I hope that, that, I don't know, maybe a different anodizer, maybe a different process, maybe a different, you know, any number of variables to get this thing right out of the box. <clears throat> I was watching a, a, an interview that, uh, that Phil Basardo had done with, uh, with Mike at the Roth, uh, Rochester, New York bait meet here uh, a few months ago. And, and Mike was talking about how he was a moderate heart, and, and I can appreciate that. I'm, I'm a tinkerer and a moderate heart, too. I generally try to improve anything that I get. But there was a statement that he made, and it was that generally with, uh, and, and I know I'm going to probably tear this up a bit, but the general concept, and we'll try to get there. Um, generally, every commercial product, when brought to market, there are certain, I don't know, compromises or certain, uh, you know, corners, I guess, that have to be maneuvered through to, uh, to reach a certain price point and get a product to market. And Mike said that he was the kind of guy that he looks at the things that those, that those vendors missed. And I have to say that to make a comment like that and then to release a product like this is pretty against that logic because financially there was no, there was no, there was nothing. It was, you know, 30 minutes worth of time, some easy off, some sandpaper. To, uh, to get this thing to this vape, and I'll take another vape on it. Hmm, it's a good vape. No corners, no uh, additional cost, just paying attention to the fine details. Um, I hope this doesn't happen again with House of Hybrids and with Zen's products because I like, I like, I generally like the Zen's that I've bought so far. This was a major disappointment for me and uh, you know, I, I intend on in a couple of months revisiting this again. I'm going to buy another one just to see if these, these, uh, these issues were addressed. And, uh, and see if it, if it takes this level of, of fixing to get a, this $250 advanced personal vaporizer to that vape. Um, I have uh, the utmost confidence that they will fix it. But at this time, I guess the only time, I guess at this point, only time will tell. So here's my review queue for the couple of, next couple of weeks. I have, uh, I have, I've learned that just because I can do four reviews a week doesn't mean I should do four reviews a week because I'm going to try to keep content fresh and exciting. Um, so. You know, I've got a good, uh, if, I, if I do one review a week and maybe a tutorial a week, I right now have a couple of months of, uh, of good stuff to review and, and to bring you guys. So uh, generally all of these things I've got ready to, ready to review. I've used them to the point that I could review them, you know, a couple of, couple of solid weeks. But uh, I'm just going to stretch it out a little bit because, I don't know, the, at the speed that I buy stuff or buy hybrids and mods and Genesis's and Addies, um, I'm gonna have uh, nothing to review because the uh, the products aren't coming back coming out as, as as fast as I'm reviewing them. So I've got the uh, I've got the GP Spheroid on the uh, the GP Piccolo that's coming. Really really good looking all almost all in one unit. It's hybrid esque because they were made for each other. Although it's not a hybrid, you got a you know 510 battery and a silica based atomizer. But we'll talk about that. We've got the Hellfire Mini coming. I've got it on a, uh, a brushed piccolo that uh, I actually brushed myself. Got it looking really, really mint. Um, so that's coming. I've been using that for a little while. What else we got coming? Uh, we've got the Short Did. That's going to be on the way. Love using this thing on the Pravori. Uh, phenomenal with Genesis Atomizer and becoming you know, top three for me. And then we're going to go to the, uh, the old trusty Hellfire Mega. That's on the way coming down the road. So uh, that's what I got. We'll take one more vape off of the, uh, the cobalt and, and we'll call that done. Be strong, vape on. It's JC West. We'll see you again next time.